Welcome back to Channel 37. First of all, we'd like to thank those of you who were present for the premiere of our MS22 video. We really love the interaction and the warm vibes in the chat. Today we're welcoming a new member into our synthesizer family. It's the little Plinky, a device that both Lily and I instantly fell in love with when we first heard the sound demos on the internet. Its creator, MM Alex, was kind enough to send us a unit to build for you guys on this channel. Although the Plinky can be mounted, it's much more than your average Eurorack module. It's an 8-voice polyphonic synthesizer with a capacitive touch interface, a sequencer, and an effects chain. We feel really privileged that we get to build one of these little creatures because the internet fell in love with Plinky. The most recent run consisted of 250 units, but Thonk already has 1,500 orders in. So we're part of the Plinky 1%! Now, if you're one of the lucky people who also gets to build one of these Plinkies, congratulations to you. It's easy to see what makes Plinky so lovable. Just like the vintage synthesizers of the early days of electronic music, it has these charming imperfections. Now, vintage synthesizers accomplish this by having a fully analog signal chain, and a lot of the components just weren't perfect back in the day, which resulted in every keystroke producing a slightly different sound. Now, Plinky is a fully digital synth, but it accomplishes the same effect by making very clever use of that capacitive touch interface. Because every person has slightly different fingers, the software that Plinky runs amplifies those differences and uses them in clever ways to influence the sound. So every time you touch the Plinky, you will produce a slightly different and unique sound. I'm a classical bassoonist, and what I love most about what I do is that me and every other person as I know will always have a completely different sound. Eurorack is a very cognitive approach to music, and this is great, but it's not as natural for me as, say, picking up an instrument and learning to play it, and that's what I love about Plinky, and I really hope that with much practice I can play it like its own instrument. For me, the prospect of actually playing the Plinky is a little bit daunting, because I lack Lily's classical training. But what I am excited about is the idea of interacting directly with the sound, stumbling upon serendipitous combinations of tone that inspire me and that I could develop more into musical ideas. So I look to the Plinky more as a source of playful inspiration. <laughs> the creator of the Plinky, M.M. Alex, may be a newcomer to the synthesizer world, but he is a very respected name in the software development scene. And without getting too deep into his backstory, one common thread of all of his previous work is that it stimulates this interaction between creator and creation. And it's just really nice to see that vision consolidated into a synthesizer module. When we first reached out to Alex, he invited us to join the Plinky Discord, which is an online discussion group. There, we were impressed to find out just how many creative and motivated people were involved to help Plinky along on its journey. And if you want to be more involved with your Plinky, I really advise you to join the Discord as well. Thanks to the involvement of the Plinky family, this synthesizer is pretty much always evolving. This is the second version of the Plinky with a blue PCB. So if you order yours from Thong, this is what you'll get. Holy scooter buckets. This looks like the front panel. So lovely. It's hot. These are the 64 surface mount LEDs. I'm devastated that uh, we don't get to do those. Utterly devastated. If your PCB is blue like this, you're watching the right video. This is the screen. And miscellaneous components. But importantly, you get this sticker sheet and you have to pick a team. I'm team black. I'm very happy with pink. One major difference with the blue version of the Plinky is that you no longer have to solder the 64 surface mount LEDs by hand. We're a little disappointed by this because we've been really perfecting our <laughs> SMD soldering skills, but I guess we could use that extra time to just make music with it. Anyway, we're real excited to go build this, so let us show you how you can build your Plinky. We start off by removing the production rails from the front panel and smoothing it out gently with a nail file. 
We're using a vacuum cleaner with HEPA filter because we're a little bit paranoid about fiberglass. Next up is the main board. This one has production rails on both sides. Follow the same procedure to get rid of them and smooth the sides. Next, clean the PCB with isopropyl alcohol. Now it's time to solder the four stereo headphone jacks and inputs. Note that these can be soldered in two positions. If you intend to mount your plinky in your rack, choose the innermost position. That's what we've done here. Use the back panel to keep the jacks in place. Flip the board and solder one leg on each. It's essential to check that the jacks are flush with the board. If they are, solder all the remaining legs. Next up are the two USB connectors. These are pre-soldered, but for extra stability, the ground lugs need a little more solder. And on the other side. Now it's time for the expansion header. Place the header, flip the board and hold it in place with a piece of foam or anything else. Solder two corner pins, then check to see it's flush with the board. Then solder the remaining pins. Now it's time for the Eurorack power header. Follow the same procedure. Next, we need to solder pins to the OLED screen. The OLED screen sits a bit too low on the pin header. This is incorrect. Push the plastic down on the pin header. We're using the back of tweezers to apply pressure evenly. If you did it correctly, the pins will now sit flush with the OLED PCB. Now solder into place. According to the build guide, you must now place the interboard connectors. However, it might be easier to place these last. Next, 13 black jack sockets and 3 green jack sockets. 2 potentiometers and 1 encoder. Next, we place the potentiometers. Apply gentle pressure so the side legs snap into the board. If this dislodges the pin headers, replace them at the end. Then place the encoder. One leg hangs off the board. Note that the encoder is shorter than the potentiometers, so push it all the way up so that it is flush with the front panel. Place the green jack sockets in the squares labeled green. jack sockets in the remaining squares. Next is the OLED screen. Balance it on top of the two stereo jacks. Then place the front panel, wiggling everything into place. Screw on a few nuts to hold it there. Place the board on something to raise it off the table, then flip it over. Make sure this is a tight sandwich. Solder only the corner pins of each part to make sure it's flush with the board before soldering all the remaining pins. Mm -hmm. 
After you're done, make sure you remove the foil from the OLED screen. Don't forget it like we did. We had to remove the washer from the encoder, otherwise the nut wouldn't fit. Now place the knobs on the potentiometers and encoder. Only push them down once they are perfectly aligned. Next, build a cradle for your Plinky by screwing the spacers into the back panel. You can screw these by hand easily. Gently place Plinky into its cradle, then screw it into place. Finally, the four rubber feet. That's it, your Plinky's done, congratulations. Take a moment to admire your handiwork. Let's give Plinky a fresh software update. Hold down the encoder and insert the USB cable. Your computer should recognize Plinky as an external drive. Plinky should now display the Tunnel of Lights effect. Go to the Plinky website and download the latest firmware file and drag it onto the Plinky drive. You can replace the file in the destination. Plinky will go crazy until the firmware is updated. If you'd like some presets, download the LPZW's bank. Extract the zip file. And copy the selected files to the Plinky drive. Again, you can replace the files in the destination. To reboot Plinky, press the encoder. Now it's time for calibration. Take off your latex gloves and press each illuminated pad in turn, making sure to keep your finger on the center of each pad every time. Now it's time to fly. We're here in the park enjoying our freshly built Plinky. It's been such a rewarding experience. Lily, what do you think about it? I'm in love with it. As I had mentioned in the intro video, I was really looking forward to working with a synthesizer which felt more like an instrument and this does just that. In the few hours that I've gotten to spend on it, I've really felt a connection to the instrument and a lot of ideas for how I could implement it came to mind. Actually, next week, I'll be playing my final recital uh, at the conservatory in Amsterdam, and I will be implementing the Plinky into some introductory elements in the performance. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, it's definitely brought a lot of joy to our lives. Uh, just fooling around with Plinky, showing it to our friends. It's a very intuitive approach to sound and synthesis, so it seems really accessible to everybody. Uh, and it's been getting some of Lily's classical musician friends <laughs> excited. Very excited, actually. About the idea of electronic uh, sound. Mm -hmm. We want to keep this video short and sweet because we know that 250 of you out there are getting ready to build your own Plinkies. So with that in mind, let's go straight into the review. We do this ballroom style. <laughs> okay, the first category is face. I think it could not be more gorgeous. It is the 10 out of 10 supermodel of all synths. I love the kind of hieroglyphic sort of feeling yeah. and the fact that like it, it illuminates in this beautiful way and so I love to play it at night in the dark and just kind of be, it's just me and the Plinky. It's almost hypnotizing. Like we've noticed that when we put people in front of the Plinky, when they touch it and when it responds to their touch, uh, they get really mesmerized by it. Mm -hmm. The user experience design on this is really top notch. What you see is what you get. There's a graphical icon for each feature and every feature is organized by category. So it's really easy to find and control different parameters. Also the way you can modulate things here by linking them up using the shift key 
it's really straightforward. So with that in mind, with this relatively simple synthesizer, you can easily create very complex patches. The next category is groove. How groovy it is, how well it plays. I think it's very groovy. You could literally take this anywhere and compose a full piece of music with it. Uh, it's suitable for all parts of the composition. If you have this and multi-track software or a standalone multi-tracker, you could make a whole song using just a Plinky. And the great thing about it is you could take it anywhere. Like right now we're playing it in the park. You could take this on a holiday and just get real creative and inspired with it. Uh, so we think it's super groovy. I also think it integrates well with other instruments. It has Eurorack inputs and outputs. So even if you just need uh, end of chain effects, you could use Plinky for that. If you want to get freaky with modulation, you could use <laughs> Plinky for that. So yeah, it's just a buddy to all other Eurorack devices. Third category is Crave. How much do we want it? So much. I don't think I've wanted any module more. It's really amazing. Absolute 10. I just cannot believe we have this because there's so much anticipation. It's a highly desirable synthesizer. Um, I would go as far as to call it indispensable. It's actually a relatively inexpensive unit. Uh, the next generation might be open source, which would further reduce the cost to obtaining one. So I think that this is just a very generous gesture of Plinky's creator and everybody should get one and get inspired. Agreed. Okay, the final category is Noob. And this is how easy it is for Noob to build and play. It's the easiest build I've ever done. Yeah. It's clear that the building process is meant to be fun and easy. When you look back at the build video, you'll notice that there are all kinds of hidden messages on the PCB. So you feel like its designer is communicating with you and has some Easter eggs in mind for you. One of the Easter eggs was actually repeated in this video, so watch out for that. We feel like our journey with the Plinky has only just begun. We spent a lot of the time in our videos focusing on the build process, but in the future, we'd really like to explore the musical capabilities with Plinky especially, showing you how we do our patching, how we create music with it, and how it incorporated it into our larger musical lives. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy building your Plinky.